after putting in over 30 hours, is Sparking Zero even worth it, even for Christians? Shalom, I'm Noah Price, and boy, am I so glad that we finally got this game. I'm among the many players who grew up with the Budokai Tenkaichi franchise and were surprised to hear the announcement of them making a new sequel in the modern day. It's crazy to think about. And if you want to know my full experience with the game of like actually playing through the story mode and just gameplay of like online ranked, that's going to be another video later on. This is going to be a quick video going over my thoughts of do I recommend this game my first impressions of the game things i like things i think could be better etc this is the classic 3d fighter dragon ball game that just pits so many characters against each other this is all about that power fantasy of giving you the anime experience as much as possible for reference, I already made a video talking about Budokai Tenkaichi 3 as a little remembrance of like, ah, I grew up this game, I enjoyed it, and I go more in depth into it there. But suffice to say, it truly does feel like you're just playing with action figures and like the cool, really strong characters are really strong and the weak characters are weak. But in like a good way? <laughs> Like, having a weak character like Yajirobe or Mr. Satan is still fun to play as, and as we get into later, you actually will be playing in, possibly, which is awesome. I like it. But yeah, so many characters are here. So many characters are here, especially with this game, for the first time ever, having like a really Dragon Ball game with like super characters for the Budokai franchise. It's very cool to see what characters they decided to keep in and what decided to uh, not make it over in this fourth game in, in the Budokai Tenkai Ichi franchise. There's barely any Dragon Ball characters, but that's fine. I mean, again, Super is the main focus here. Just like how in Budokai Tenkai Ichi 3, the main focus was on GT, because that's the latest thing in the anime. It made sense that they focus on that, and they give it its love. So if you like Super, you're gonna like a lot of stuff here. But don't worry, if you still like all the other stuff like Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT like I do, you're still gonna find characters you like, trust me. And of course with DLC, more characters will be coming in, so we'll see what all they end up actually adding. But hey, I'm already enjoying the roster. More than I was expecting, to be honest. Like Goku Black and Fusamasu. I, I like Goku Black, but I didn't really like Fusamasu uh, until I played this. Then I liked Fusamasu way more. And Future Gohan, oh my goodness. Finally, is this the first time in game where he doesn't have an arm? It's crazy. It's crazy it took this long, but I love it. It's so cool. But as we get into the gameplay actual side of it in game modes, this is where the imbalance of it could bother a lot of people. Because a main focus of this game from the previous series is online. Online is such a modern thing of a standard, it wasn't quite the same to many people in the past. Sure, you might have played some online in the previous Budokai games, but maybe you're like me, where internet access and online play wasn't kind of the standard quite yet, so while you played the game a bunch, you didn't really play online. So this might be your first experience of playing online. And boy, do they support it a lot with rank through just regular single character battles and DP or, or damage power battles, which probably my fairest mode. As I mentioned, if you like me, getting into ranked and grinding rank is kind of fun. And in here, the mode I like most, there is the single character mode you can do, but what I like more, honestly, is the DP battle mode. What it is, is basically you have a limited supply of only 15 points that you can have for a team. And so within five characters to the max, you can slot in within 15 points and run a team. And you'll notice that some of the big hitters are eight points. So you you can't really run two big hitters but what will tend to happen which is really funny as a side effect is a lot of times you'll be floating like one point or two a lot of times one point guess what the only character that is one point is mr satan so it's so funny that the worst character in the game is actually getting played more in ranked mode because it's like well i i can't afford to put him on the slot might as well it doesn't hurt it's just so funny it's so funny as a, like a side effect and again i i like this balancing of it being like 15 points you do have a good flexibility of like choosing oh do i want to go low and have a lot of different kind of characters or do i want to go and just pick two big strong boys it's obvious 
obviously the majority is you pick really good characters like uh fusion characters so many fusion characters when you go into rank it's just it's what to expect and you know what i can't blame people for doing it for some reason i have this weird like stigma where whenever something is really hyped and everybody's playing a popular thing i almost usually switch off of it so i haven't really touched a lot of the fusions or even like ui goku which is awesome in the game and so like some of those cool characters aren't here it's like even though i'm avoiding it at the same time i'm like i don't blame you they're awesome they're cool it's like that's kind of the reason why we're playing these games because these characters are cool to play but at the same time a lot of the characters have been giving a lot of love so i've been liking other characters too like i know growing up i used to play a lot of just like goku and versions so that he get up all the way to super saiyan 3 and in this version it would be like dragon ball goku super version so that he could be like super saiyan god all that kind of stuff the latest where he has the most power theoretically well i've been enjoying goku mid because he has a dumb gimmick to where you could actually do giving your energy and try to get a massive spirit bomb that you can drop on people to do massive damage this definitely kills right oh my goodness the gameplay here is very similar to the old game it's very similar in a lot of the main states but it's still a new game so you're not going to be just button mashing and throwing supers willy-nilly that won't be successful because a big change here is pretty obvious this game is fast in comparison to the older games and it's crazy how much you have to like manage your your your, your stamina and also kind of bouncing you like jumping around and dodging and not only that but countering there's so many counters and it's kind of high def like mechanics it's kind of surprising for a lot of people it's kind of like oh you don't ex expect that from it being a budokai take out ichi game but it's actually really crazy and fun to play the two other modes that are kind of in here that are looked at is custom mode which is basically like community driven mario maker style making your own levels and mission story mode that like the community can make and have other people do this isn't really something for me i don't i'm not crazy about making levels and i'm not really crazy about playing levels but i do know a lot of people especially from like other games like xenoverse and other stuff like that who love doing this and so it's cool to have this feature like i made my own just to see how it goes it's really trash but like okay i can kind of see the feel it also is pretty janky though to be honest but it's like and eh, what do you expect it's like i'm not surprised by that also what i love the most about it is i do know a lot of creators they do make a lot of content around these type of things obviously having another atla here in this game it's cool that's awesome the last mode we need to talk about is story mode. It's called episode battles and it's very interesting because I love and hate this mode so much. This is not a game you come in playing to learn the story of Dragon Ball. This is not the game you come into to get a cool story mode experience because all it is is a lot of flash like screens where it says like text and whatnot and then like not really cut scenes and then you're in the combat. It really flies through marathon you're doing a battle to battle to battle through a story through a specific character storyline. So it goes through the Saiyan arc and then once you get through the Saiyan arc when it starts at Namek arc and literally starts right when Goku arrives. So you skip a lot of story, but that's because you have other character stories where you'll get their perspective. It's all right. It's kind of interesting to get this timeline, but the main focus here of the storyline that really made me like this story mode is it's really focused on the what ifs. People love what ifs when it comes to Dragon Ball. Like, okay, what if they did this? And whenever they implemented it in game, it's very fun as an extra kind of thing. This is much more prominent as in like a main feature into the story mode. For example, with the goku black arc you actually have options to where you could potentially end without even fusing and so you end with zamasu and goku black and it's like stuff like that is very cool and the fact that they win themselves like much more focus on the what if scenarios as you go in i like that but the pacing of it as a player kind of sucks to be honest because it's what it happens is it feels like a choose your own adventure almost where you like you start going and you just marathon till you get to the end so you're making your choice your choices and you're going through and there's no breaks if you're used to any other like dragon ball game or most games with missions you would know that once you do a mission it kind of stops and you can continue to do the next mission or you can exit out and stuff like that. you can take a break that's not here you're just going 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 and you could probably exit out and recontinue probably but like that's not how it is naturally and so you're just going and honestly for me it was very draining <laughs> But it was cool to like go through it, do that, and then be like, oh, what was the pass I missed? And then go back and complete it. Again, that's where I love and hate this. I understand why they made the decision they did, but at the same time, it's kind of weird. Also, it's weird that the story mode is also like very much like it feels like the custom mode, like the devs just made it through custom mode. I know it's a little bit more than that, but it feels like it's based off of that. 
I guess maybe to stay consistent. I don't know. Maybe because it wasn't their biggest priority. I don't know. It's fine is basically the thing. And that is basically it. That's my thoughts on Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. This game's great. I like it so much and I'm pumped to share you guys my full experience once I'm done fully completing the game and ranking up further and letting you guys share in that full experience. Again, subscribe if you actually want to not miss out that video that's probably the best way to do that or hit the notification bell that's also a way to actually be notified for when the videos come out i i, I do videos sometimes like not bi-weekly sometimes when i do my bigger videos so hitting the notification bell is actually helpful for that kind of reason since i don't upload so often and again thank you to my patrons again they help me support me so much with actually funding me for doing this i greatly appreciate it. even those who are just one dollar like in my patreon it truly does mean a lot so thank you so much jesus loves you I love you guys too, and I'll see you guys later, maybe in rank. Shalom.